those online, I think, were not able to hear. Um, OK, so um, we already we prayed and opened. Sorry, I don't know if you were able to hear the prayer. No? OK. Uh, we'll, uh, we closed with the Gospel of Mark last week. And this week, um, or today, or sorry, last class. And then today, we'll begin in the book of Luke and uh, continue next week to go into the outline of Luke. Um, so let's just uh, go into our content for today, The a little bit of an introduction to some of the themes that Luke covers. And, um, and then I also wanted to talk a little bit about maybe how we can look at the outline. Uh, we'll try this out for the Gospel of Luke. Uh, I was thinking maybe each of us could take one chapter from the Gospel and just give like a 30 second summary of the chapter. OK, so what I'll do is uh, today I'll post a chapter and I'll put your name against it. Um, and I'll post it on Google Classroom so that you can be prepared on Monday to do that. Uh, on Monday, we'll just go quickly because we have to cover it quickly as well. So uh, if you see your name, just be prepared to share whatever chapter has been assigned to you. OK, so just a quick 30 seconds, uh, just so that each of us is also engaged in looking at the book. And um, yeah, we can all learn together. So let's begin with the Gospel of Luke. Um, sorry, my screen seems to be very. OK, we went ahead, yeah. So uh, the Gospel of Luke, as opposed to, so we looked at Matthew, was written to Jewish Christians. Mark was written to the Gentiles, primarily to Roman Christians. Uh, and Luke is written to Greek uh, speaking, so Hellenistic people specifically. Uh, so if you look here, this is northern Greece, um, all of this area. And so um, this is where Luke was mostly writing to people in this region. Uh, so again, um, it may have been Jews and um, and Gentiles, but mostly people who are influenced by Greek culture. So we'll see that coming into his gospel as well. Uh, Luke is, we see, also very interested in history. So um, we can look at him as the first church historian uh, because he's recorded for us uh, in detail about Jesus's life and ministry. Um, he also includes some secular history in his book. So we'll uh, maybe we can look quickly at these four passages mentioned here. But what is helpful about that is that you can connect the story of Jesus to what was happening in the larger culture at that time. Um, so let's just read Luke 1, 5, Luke 2, 1, all of the verses mentioned here. Uh, if anyone can open. Luke chapter 1, verse 5. There was in the days of Herod, the king of Judea, a certain priest named Zacharias of the division of Abijah. His wife was of the daughter of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Thank you. Uh, Luke 2, 1. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. And it came to pass in those days that a uh, decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. Thank you. So here we have uh, the previous uh, record was uh, in Luke 1, 5 was telling us about who the king was at that time. Uh, Luke 2 is saying what was happening uh, in uh, amongst the people there. So Caesar Augustus has asked for a uh, census to be taken. So these things help us connect back to other history uh, records that we have outside of scripture. Um, so 3.1 and 3.2, if someone can read that for us. 
everyone. Uh, now in the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being governor of Judea, uh, Herod being tetrarch of Galilee, his brother Philip tetrarch of Ituria, and the region of Trachonitis, and Lysanias tetrarch of Abilene, while uh, three one and, and three two. Uh, while uh, Annas and Caiaphas were high priests, the word of God came to John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness. Okay, so we have about the Roman leaders in place as well as the Jewish high priests who were ruling at that time. Um, and then in Luke's gospel, we have a much more detailed account of Jesus' birth, death, resurrection, and ascension, uh, much more than in the other Gospels. So uh, do any of you all have a favorite Gospel out of the four Gospels? John, OK. So uh, anyone online, any specific Gospel that is your favorite? Gospel of John, sister. John, OK. So uh, for me, Luke has been one of my favorites. And in fact, we uh, read this to my daughter while I was still pregnant with her, my our first daughter. Um, because I think it's written in a very relatable way. It's written like especially for someone who is completely foreign to who Jesus is or to the Christian faith. Luke is a very easy book to read. Uh, and so Luke's record is very, very uh, detailed from like what we're looking at here, from the prophecy about Jesus's birth uh, and John the Baptist's birth to how their parents reacted to what happened when they were taken to the temple, or when Jesus was taken to the temple. All of these records are not there in the other gospels. Uh, so it's very, and it's written in a, a story format. So it's very easy to read as well. Um, yeah, let's continue from there. So uh, characteristics of Luke, um, like what I was talking about, the announcement of John the Baptist and of Jesus. So we have the record of the angel uh, going uh, to Zacharias in the temple when he's in the temple and telling him uh, that he's going to have a son, right? And then Zacharias doesn't believe, and then he's not able to talk until the baby is born. Uh, so that is recorded only in Luke. Uh, the story of uh, the angel going to Mary and telling her about uh, the birth of Jesus, that she's going to have a baby and it's going to be, um, she's going to carry the Son of God. Um, and then Mary meeting Elizabeth after that. So all of these details, how they meet each other uh, before John the Baptist is born and before Jesus is born. Um, all of this is recorded in Luke. Plus, we also have the most detailed stories about uh, Jesus and John when they were uh, when they were little, right? So John, we only have that record of Elizabeth and Mary meeting, but Jesus, uh, we have stories of him as a child in Luke much more than in any of the other gospels. Um, then we also see the ascension of Jesus. So Jesus giving the Great Commission and his ascension, which is not recorded uh, with the same amount of detail in Matthew and Mark. Uh, we have a very detailed account of Jesus going to Jerusalem before his crucifixion. So uh, this also... Uh, the Gospel of John definitely is very focused on the passion uh, narrative and so is very focused on the crucifixion itself. Uh, but Luke gives this journey to Jerusalem in a lot of detail. Um, and then Luke is also the longest of the Synoptic Gospels and the longest uh, New Testament book as well. Okay, so because Luke is written to a Greek audience rather than a Jewish audience, we'll see in his book that uh, there is a lot of focus on all people. Okay, so when we say Luke's universalism, that means the focus on the fact that the gospel, that Jesus came for all people. It's not 
just for the people of Israel, not just for the Jews. Uh, and so uh, these are a few examples we see in the gospel itself. So uh, Luke 2.10, if we can open that and read it. Luke 2.10. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. Yes. So the right at the beginning, when they are talking about Jesus' birth, it's for all people, goodwill to all people. Uh, Luke 2.32. A light to bring revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. So you see here both the, talking about the Israelites, but also that uh, Jesus is a light to the Gentiles. Uh, Luke 3, 4 to 6. Luke chapter 3, verse 4. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, the prophet saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Verse 5, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill brought low. The crooked place shall be made straight, and the rough way smooth. Verse 6, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. So here as well, this addition that Luke Luke includes in this prophecy uh, that all people will see God's salvation. Um, we don't see that in uh, the other Gospels. Um, can we read the next one? Forward 25 to 27. But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel Sorry, uh, but I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout the, all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath, in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elisha the prophet, and none of them were cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. Thank you. So here we see these two records where uh, God sent people to non-Israelites. So uh, Jesus is using this example from the Old Testament uh, to talk about how uh, the Israelites were rejected because uh, they were not truly uh, open to God, uh, right? Jesus is using these examples. So again, here where Luke has recorded these stories for us, um, Luke, uh, Luke 24, 47, we see the Great Commission to all nations. So Matthew also records this for us. And then uh, Luke 14, 8 to 16, uh, we see uh, Jesus talking about the parable of the Great Supper. So uh, where um, he's invited, the king has invited people to a wedding banquet. And uh, those who have, in, who have been invited uh, come up with different excuses for why they can't be there. And then he sends his servants out into the streets and invites anybody who is willing to come. So again, uh, this is not recorded uh, in Matthew's account, but Luke includes this uh, to say that the gospel now is uh, being sent out to all people and all people are being invited uh, to that final supper with the Lamb. Um, in the new kingdom. So um, we'll continue with some of the characteristics in Luke. So Luke is very interested in people. So uh, while Matthew is very focused on the kingdom of God, Luke's stories are very focused on certain people. He's talking about different people throughout the book. Uh, so in the parables, when he's recording the parables, his focus is on people in the parables. Uh, and whenever he's talking about an event, his focus is on the people rather than God's kingdom or rather than uh, something that he's trying to teach them about. He's using people's stories to communicate uh, 
uh, the story of Jesus. Um, so we see here a list of all the people, he, some of the people he talks about. So he talks about Zacharias, he talks about Elizabeth and Mary, about Martha and Mary, um, about uh, Zacchaeus, the tax collector, about Cleopas and his companion. So Cleopas and his companion are the two uh, disciples who are on the road to Emmaus uh, that Jesus encounters after his resurrection. So uh, Cleopas um, is, is kind of astonished that Jesus doesn't know why they are sad and uh, what they are uh, upset about. So uh, each of these stories are about specific people, their encounters with Jesus, how they experience Jesus, what Jesus said to them. Uh, all of these things are uh, things that Luke focuses on. Um, Luke is also a very social gospel. You'll, you'll see that a lot when you're looking, if you're studying the book of Luke. Uh, so one is where he focuses on social outcasts. Um, we see in 736 the uh, story of the immoral woman. If we can open to Luke 736. Luke chapter 7 verse 36. Then one of the Pharisees asked him to eat with him. And he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to eat. Uh, you can go on to uh, verse 37 as well. And behold, a woman in the city who was a sinner, when she knew that uh, Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster flask of fragrant oil. Okay, and then uh, verse 39. Verse 39, now when the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he spoke to himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would know who and what manner of woman this is, who is touching him, for she is a sinner. Okay, so we see here one story about an outcast. Uh, so somebody who is viewed as a sinner by the religious uh, leaders, right, or by all those who were uh, very religious, uh, she was not someone who was included. And so they expect that Jesus will also exclude her. Uh, but Jesus' response is, who will love a debtor more, someone who owes him a small debt or someone who owes him a large debt? Right. Uh, so Jesus is always uh, including these outsiders. We see that in the story of Zacchaeus as well in chapter 19. Um, and we see that also in the repentance of the robber who's crucified with Jesus. So Luke records that story as well for us. So Luke is very uh, inclusive of these people who were socially ostracized at that time in religious circles. Um, he also includes these parables, uh, the prodigal son, the two debtors. Um, so the prodigal son, the two debtors, and the publican. The publican is the um, parable of the Pharisee and the tax collector. So where the Pharisee and tax collector are both praying. Uh, and the Pharisee is praying a very self-righteous prayer, uh, talking about how he's so much better than uh, all the sinners around him and including that tax collector who is praying next to him. And the tax collector, on the other hand, is someone who is humble, who recognizes his need for a savior and he's coming confessing his sin to God. Uh, so here we see that uh, heart in Luke's gospel for these people, the people who were outsiders. Uh, Luke also um, focuses a lot on women compared to the other Gospels. So there are 13 women in the Gospel of Luke who are not mentioned in the other Gospels at all. Uh, so he mentions these 13 women. Um, some of the women that he mentions is the immoral woman, uh, the women who supported Jesus with their gifts, uh, who supported the ministry with their gifts, those who were um, on the sides 
as Jesus was going to the cross, who were mourning as Jesus was going to the cross. Uh, women are included in the birth and resurrection stories of Jesus. Uh, they are included in the cross. Uh, when Jesus is at the cross, women are mentioned at the cross. Women are mentioned at the tomb. Um, so the word women is mentioned 43 times in the book of Luke, which is the same as both Matthew and Mark. If you put both Gospels together, it has they uh, talk about women 43 times. Whereas Luke, um, in his one record, talks about them the same number of times. Um, other mentions of women is uh, how women served God in society. So we have a list of passages here and the devotion of women uh, to God uh, in serving him. Uh, so we can't go into all of these passages. Maybe we can just look at uh, the service of women to society and God. We look at chapter 8, Luke chapter 8. One to six, if someone can read that for us. Luke chapter eight, verse one. Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him. Verse two. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. Verse three. And Jonah, the wife of Chusa, uh, Herod's steward. And Susan and many others who pro who provided for him from their substance was forth. And when a great multitude had gathered and they had come to him from every city, he spoke by a parable. Verse 5 A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trampled down, and the birds of the air devoured it. Verse 6, some fell on rock, and as soon as it sprang up, it weathered away because it lacked moisture. Thank you. So I think, yeah, uh, verses 1 to 3 is where specifically there's mention of women. So the women who were with him along with the 12. Uh, so we don't see that recorded much. We usually have the 12 disciples mentioned. Uh, but Luke is mentioning here the women. And he's not only mentioning that there were women, he's mentioning specifically the names of the women. So uh, Mary Magdalene, Joanna, uh, Susanna, and others who were supporting the ministry. Um, let's also look at uh, Luke chapter 18, verses 1 to 3. Um, as one example uh, where he talks about the devotion of, of women. Luke 18. Uh, then he spoke a parable to them that men always ought to pray and not lose heart, saying, There was in a certain city a judge who did not fear God but regard man, nor regard man. Now there was a widow in that city, and she came to him, saying, Get justice for me from my adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I do not fear God nor regard man. Uh, so is that all? One, two, three? Yeah, no problem. You can go ahead, just read till the end of this. Okay. Uh, yet because this widow troubles me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. Thank you. So uh, here, the illustration of a woman who is going to a judge repeatedly for the sake of getting justice, right? Uh, used as an example of somebody who is diligently praying and seeking justice from God. Will God not answer their prayer? Um, we see also in Luke an interest in children. So uh, he talks about the childhood of John the Baptist and Jesus. And then we see these three examples of where uh, Jesus ministers to a, uh, to a widow 
or a uh, or a parent of an only child uh, in 712 and 842 it's where the only child is uh, in 712 it's about the death of an only child uh, 842 it's about uh, only child who is sick uh, and 938 is an only child who is being oppressed by demons uh, so the parent goes to Jesus and Jesus has compassion on them uh, so Luke has this record and um, and uh, he uh, the childhood of John the Baptist and Jesus is only recorded in Luke uh, we also see social relationships so Luke talks a lot about Jesus uh, in social gatherings we look at a few of these. Um, so here, Jesus is dining with the Pharisees. There are records of Jesus dining with the Pharisees. We have a record of Jesus at Bethany. Maybe we can look at it. this, Luke 10, 38 to 42. Uh, sorry, go ahead, sister. Luke 10, 38 to 42. Now it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into a house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things. But one thing is needed, and Mary has chosen the good part, which will not be taken away from her. Thank you. So um, we see here jesus dining at his disciples homes right so luke uh, is very interested in these relationships that jesus had uh, how he is engaging with people in their homes uh, we see with zacchaeus um, he goes to zacchaeus's home we see the story of him going to uh, the disciples on the road to Emmaus when they invite him to their house he goes with them and breaks bread with them we see other illustrations. So uh, on the traveler requiring refreshment, let's just look at that. Luke 11, verses 5 to 8. Luke 11, uh, verse 5. And he said to them, Which of you shall have a friend? And go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves, for a friend of mine has come to me on his journey, and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within and say, do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. Thank you. Uh, we also see uh, these other illustrations So the lost coin uh, when the prodigal son returns and the innkeeper in the story of the Good Samaritan taking care of the uh, wounded uh, person who's fallen by the side of the road. So all of these, uh, there's a focus on hospitality, there's a focus on relationships, on taking care of people, uh, on uh, gathering together in people's homes. Uh, so a lot of that kind of uh, reflection on Jesus's ministry, that Jesus was very intentional in relationships uh, and he was um, very engaged in this aspect of hospitality, that he was with people, uh, spending time with people in their homes, uh, getting to know people, so in these social environments. Uh, Luke is also very interested in theology. So we see a few different topics that he focuses on. One is Jesus as savior of the world. Uh, so uh, he talks about... Uh, the word save, savior, salvation occur 21 times in the gospel. So the gospel is also known as a gospel of salvation history uh, because it's so focused on salvation uh, or Jesus as savior. 
um, what we talked about before universalism, that uh, the gospel is for all people, not just for the people of Israel or the Jews. Um, so much so that he even places Samaritans on the same level as Jews. So we see the story of the Good Samaritan uh, narrated in the uh, Gospel of Luke, uh, where the Samaritan is the one who uh, is um, elevated as someone whose example is to be followed. Right. So here we see that uh, there's no elevation of Jews above Samaritans or over any other group of people. Um, Luke also talks about the Lordship of Christ. So we see the uh, word Lord used 100 times uh, as compared to Matthew, who uses it 72 times, Mark 17 times, and John 44 times. So um, he's uh, focused on the fact that Jesus came to be Lord. Uh, Jesus came to be the master of uh, all those who follow him, and we are called to be his servants. Um, Luke also talks about the day of salvation and is very focused on the fact that that day is today. So in that uh, calling of people to respond to Jesus today, today is the day of salvation. Now is the time when we should uh, receive uh, Jesus. So uh, let's just look at maybe um, Luke 10. Let me just open that. Uh, Luke 10, 9 to 11. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. Therefore, what God has joined together, let not men separate. Uh, sorry, sorry. Luke chapter 10? Yes, Luke, Luke chapter 10. 9 to 11? Yeah, 9. Verse 9 to 11. Oh, I opened it to something else. Sorry. Sorry, 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 sorry. sorry. Yeah. Luke chapter 10, verse 9. And heal the sick there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. Verse 10. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into its street and say, verse 11, the very dust of your city which clings to us, we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. Thank you. So um, that focus on the kingdom of God is here, which we definitely see in the other gospels as well. Uh, but uh, Luke, um, uses these words now, today, today is the day of salvation, uh, a lot in the gospel. Uh, and then we see the joy of salvation. So um, joy, gladness, rejoicing uh, occurs 21 times in the book of Luke. And we see four songs recorded. Uh, that's Mary's song in Luke 1, Zechariah's song also in Luke 1, and then the angel's song and Simeon's song in Luke 2. So all of these songs are songs of joy um, because uh, of salvation that is coming in Jesus. Uh, so Luke is very focused on that message of joy uh, because of the coming of Christ uh, and salvation through Christ. Uh, so this we'll end with uh, this slide. Uh, Luke's also like we talked about, his, it's a very social gospel, which means that his interest is not only in the outcast, but also in uh, outcast in terms of religious circles because of their sin. He's also interested in the poor and the oppressed, so outcasts uh, because of their, uh, st their economic status. So uh, we see seven parables that contrast uh, the wealthy with the Poor, uh, with those who are poor or, or with those who are in a stressful economic situation. Um, let's just read um, chapter 16, verses 1 to 13, if you can read that. It's a little long, but... He also said to his disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a 
steward and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, what is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship for you can no longer be steward. Then the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig. I am ashamed to beg. I have resolved what to do, that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Uh, so he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measures of oil. So he said to him, take your bill and sit down quickly and write 50. And then he said to another, how much do you owe? So he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80. So the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. Uh, you can go on till verse 15, please. And I say to you, make friends for yourself by unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. He who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust, who will commit to your trust the true riches? And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now the Pharisees, who were true lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said to them, You are those who justify yourselves before men, but God knows your hearts. For what is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Thank you. So, um, in in the fact that Jesus was using parables that connected with the poor, he was actually uh, kind of speaking to a group of people that was outside of these religious leaders, because the religious leaders were wealthy. Uh, and so the parables themselves pointed to the fact that Jesus' heart was for the poor. Uh, he was for those who uh, were economically uh, struggling in some way, uh, which means that the Pharisees didn't connect with those parables. The parables were something that was very uh, foreign or outside to what their personal experience was. Uh, but Jesus was saying, these are the people uh, that my heart is for when he was talking about these parables, about the uh, woman with the lost coin, that would be something that would be so irrelevant to the Pharisees. Uh, to lose one coin would be completely, um, would not be something that they would be concerned about. But because this woman was poor uh, and she lost a coin, uh, and it was so important to her uh, that when she found it, she rejoiced with her neighbors. Jesus shows his heart for the poor, whereas the parables uh, with the Pharisees, you immediately see that disconnect from these parables because it's not talking to their life experience uh, for someone who didn't have to care about money that much. Uh, we see also uh, the last thing is Luke's interest in songs. So uh, there are few uh, four hymns, the four hymns we actually just talked about in Luke 1 and Luke 2. Uh, these hymns actually became uh, songs that started to be sung in the church. Uh, so the song of Mary when she visits Elizabeth, uh, the song of Zacharias when John the Baptist is born, uh, the song of the angels when Jesus is born, and Simeon's song uh, when Jesus is dedicated at the temple. So these are the four uh, songs that Luke records, which is very unique to Luke itself. Uh, 
these are not recorded in the other Gospels. Um, so we'll close with this. Um, we didn't have a chance to address any questions in the book of Mark, um, which we finished on Monday. So if you have any questions, anything else you would like to share, we can um, discuss that. If you have any questions on the book of Mark, any thoughts that you all wanted to share from what we had discussed or what we've covered today as well. If you've already mentioned that, but uh, John Mark and Mark are the same person? Yes, yes, yeah. So he was not one of the 12 uh, with the apostles. OK, so uh, what I'll do is, uh, if there are no other questions, uh, we'll I'll post the list of uh, chapters with, and I'll assign it to uh, Luke has 24 chapters. So we'll assign that to 24 people for Monday. Uh, Sanjay's posted, is it true that Luke was a physician um, or doctor by profession? Yes, uh, that's. That's as much as we know about Luke, and that's something we look at on Monday as well. We haven't gone into the author and uh, the recipients, uh, the specific occasion for writing the book of Luke. Uh, so those are some things we look at more on Monday before we begin the outline of Luke. Uh, Ma'am? Yeah. Uh, in Matthew and in Luke, like. Uh... In both the, uh, the instant in mention about the, when Satan came to tempt Jesus. So in both, like three situations are there regarding to bread uh, and uh, when he took uh, to the top of the temple and when he asked Jesus to go down himself. But uh, like in uh, Matthew and Luke, it is like slight different. Mm -hmm. like, in Luke, it is sequence is changed. Okay. Yeah. Like uh, the third thing is in, in Matthew, it is like the go down when he asked to ask, go down in front of me, that is on third in Matthew. Mm -hmm. But in Luke, it is on second. So how come it has changed? OK. So uh, Luke, can you give us the reference, please? Luke 4. OK. And 9 is where uh, he will command his angels. Um, OK, so Luke has this uh, temptation third, and Ma Matthew has it second, is it? OK. Um, so one thing that we know is um, they were both writing with the same purpose, right? So. From the end of the story, what you understand from that of Jesus' temptation, of how Jesus was tempted, the specific things that he was tempted about uh, is the same in both the Gospels. And how Jesus responds uh, from Scripture is also the same. So with these things, they were not so concerned about recording uh, things in a timeline, like this happened first, this happened second, this happened third, uh, they were much more interested in getting their message across. So at the end of this, what have we understood about Jesus's experience of being tempted? What were the things Satan was trying to tempt Jesus about? Uh, so Jesus was trying to tempt Jesus to use his authority as the Son of God in a way that benefited himself. Right, so uh, or to test the father, um, so the story is the same. Like what we learn is the same. That we are not supposed to. We don't test God. We don't use the authority that is given to us for our own benefit. We use it uh, for the benefit of the other of other people to serve other people. Um, so 
in that way, the gospel writers write their things differently, write their stories differently, um, but it's based on their goal. Right? So Matthew and Luke, even though they've interchanged those things, they're not trying to say this happened. This was the first test. This was the second test. It is That is not their main point. Their main point is these were the things that uh, the temptations that came, these were the ways that Jesus overcame temptation. Uh, so that uh, that is the reason why they may record it differently. They may not use the same words, um, all of that. Is that satisfactory answer? <laughs> OK. OK. Uh, any other questions? Sister, I have a question. Yes, sure, sister. Uh, Luke was not with, uh, he was not one of the disciples of Jesus, right? He was not, yes. Yeah, but he has written this uh, gospel in so much detail and so much uh, explanation. Uh, I mean, uh, he learned it from others? Uh, yes. So we see in Luke 1 2 where he says um, that. Uh, the Gospels were written through eyewitness accounts. Uh, so then verse 3, he says, I have carefully investigated everything from the beginning. So that means he's gone back and he's talked to uh, these eyewitnesses to make his own record uh, of what happened. And also we know that Luke was traveling with uh, Paul uh, on some of his uh, missionary journeys. So a lot of what Luke uh, writes is from his interactions with Paul, from his interactions with um, eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry, so with the other apostles. Uh, so Luke, that, that's why we say he's a historian, uh, in that he does his research and then he makes uh, he makes this account. So it's not based on his own experience, but it's based on the research that he's done. Uh, OK, thank you, sister. Thank you. Uh, Lucy, says, Lucy says, Jesus Christ had many temptations. Only three are recorded for us. Yes, so as far as we know, uh, or uh, the gospel writers have chosen uh, to talk about this, uh, specifically to talk about Jesus in this uh, being taken to the wilderness, uh, being taken into a time of testing. Um, so th there is also a specific purpose in that record. Uh, there may have been other temptations that he faced uh, that are not mentioned for whatever reason, but the wilderness experience is mentioned as something that we can expect as well, right? The Holy Spirit himself leads Jesus into the wilderness uh, to be tempted. And so when we are tested, when we are tempted, we know that um, he, just as Jesus overcame, uh, God will give us the strength to overcome those temptations. Uh, so that is the purpose of them being recorded for us and that we can learn from how Jesus overcame temptation as well. Uh, what is also interesting is that uh, it's uh, comparable to the Israelites in the wilderness. So the Israelites were taken into the wilderness. They tested God. So uh, when you look at these three examples of Jesus' temptation, it's all related to the Israelites in the wilderness. Uh, don't test God. Um, um, sorry, all of the, uh, we look, if if you want to look at all of the temptations next week, we can do that. Uh, but all three of them are related to the wilderness experience of the Israelites. And so uh, it's kind of comparing how Jesus overcame temptation in the wilderness while the Israelites did not, uh, while the Israelites actually um, fell and fell away from God in the wilderness. Um, so yeah, I hope that answers your question. OK, so we are past time. If you all have any more questions, we can cover that on Monday. Um, or we'll just continue with where we stopped.
Thank you all. Thank you.